Welcome to The Secrets of Success. By following the proven techniques of the guests who appear on this series, you'll learn that even successful people run into detours and failures, and how you can apply their success techniques to change your life. You're now listening to the most unique show on radio, the show dedicated to making you a success. Our guest says it's time to make a New Year's revolution. Let's find out more from Nina Shevchuk. Nina, thanks for being with us today. Thank you so much for having me. Now, Nina, your book is called The Mid- Midlife Revolution, correct? Yes. Okay, because we right. always think of resolution, etc. So it's Midlife Revolution. I just want our audience to know that. You begin your book and you say that we're in a constant quest to do more, be more, deliver more. But isn't that what we're taught today? You know, we, we have to get everything in the hour, multitask, do five things at once. You have to be a mom, a dog keeper, um, a secretary, a cook, virtually everything. 100%. We're, we thought and we grow up to think that we need to be a million things in one and we, we have to play all those different roles and we have to spin all of the different plates. Um and we, our attention span is getting shorter and shorter, and we get busier and busier, but we're not getting any happier. <laughs> and obviously, that's the key thing. We, we obviously all want to be happier, and we've been on for 33 years, and our guests say, happiness comes before success. So you started out right on the button by saying that. You have something called Right Now Moments, and you say we have four opportunities. So can you talk about that a little bit? Yes, I feel that the, the moment that we're in right now is oh, the only moment we really have because tomorrow is never promised, even the next hour is never promised. Yet as a society, we often live for the weekend, for the vacation, for retirement, for the tomorrow, one day, someday. Um, but all we really have is right now. And in every moment that's right now, we have the opportunity to choose, we have the opportunity to decide, we have the opportunity to wake up, and we have the opportunity to either carry on as normal or we have the opportunity to revolutionize our life. And I would guess even if people, and I, I certainly don't know why they would disagree, but certainly the period of the pandemic that we've gone through and the carryover that we're still seeing, I think made us all realize that much, much more that anything could happen at any time. We see um, shootings that we don't expect. We see events of nature that surprise us, hurricanes, tornadoes, earthquakes. So uh, we really do have to live in the now. And I think you make a great point there. Do we spend too much of our life also lo- uh, trying to live up to the expectations of others, whether it's parents or friends or bosses? I think so. I think we, so when we're born as children, we're born naturally happy and we need something external to make us feel unhappy, like being hungry or having a dirty nappy or a scary toy. And then the dynamics change. And when we go older, we need something external to make us feel happy. So whether that's a relationship, whether that's more money, whether that's the next vacation, and so on. And we try to fit into the what I like to call the cookie cutter standards of what we think we should be and what we think we should do and what we think success should look like based on somebody else's standards. So we try to squeeze our life into some sort of standards that we think we need to be applying ourselves to. Um, but really, if you look at the state of mental health, over 1 billion of people are reporting globally that they suffer from stress, from anxiety, from depression. Well, clearly that formula isn't working very well for us. And one that's an amazing number. You said 1 billion people. Is that right? And I guess, that is right. And I guess we all think of stress as kind of a uh, soft illness or, oh, I'm stressed because we're busy or we're perspiring a little bit or we're running from our car to the office or something like that. But stress can really result in medical conditions and of course, worsen things, uh, diseases and conditions like heart disease, et cetera, et cetera. Am I correct? Absolutely. So even going back to one of your op- episodes with Dr. Bernstein, David Bernstein, who said that actually over 95% of chronic illnesses are caused by our external environment and our lifestyle. And what happens is where we live by the emotions of stress. So we're stressed every day because we're in traffic, because we have so much to do, because we're juggling so much. We don't even realize that we spend most of our lives being stressed. And of course, that has impact on your body because you create, you generate chemicals of stress and your immune system can only fight it for so long before it gets too tired and you become ill. And that then leads to to various illnesses. 
Years ago, I was handling a family situation and it was causing me stress, but I thought like everything else, we'd all have some stress in our lives. And then one day I literally had trouble driving the car because of a pain in my elbow, which I've never had since that time. And in fact, when the family situation ended about a month later, all of a sudden I noticed the elbow pain was gone. As soon as the stressful situation disappeared, the physical pain disappeared with it. So I think many more of us may be suffering from that than we even know. So I appreciate you bringing up that point. Now, a lot of us hear the term midlife crisis, but your book talks about a midnight, a midlife revolution. Can you explain the difference? Well, the difference is that um, midlife crisis is still seen as something negative, And that's when you get to a stage in your life where you feel like, is this it? Um, So when we're younger, we have all these dreams and goals and ambitions and desires. And then we start the serious kind of adult life and you get involved in work and career and family. And all of that is exciting to start with. But then suddenly all the years become very similar and everything becomes one big blur. And then suddenly you get to midlife and people are like, is this it? So someone I spoke to with recently said basically she was in a car with her husband on the way back from work and she was like, I'm on the same motorway every day. I'm literally doing work, the motorway, family. Is this it? Like, what is the, what, what is the more to life? So what am I going to do? So midlife crisis, basically, it's like a wake up call where you start searching for something within and be like, what else do I want to achieve here? And I'm, I'm not even talking in terms of career, but as a human being, who do I want to be and what do I want the rest of my experience here on this planet to be like? Um, But often it's seen as negative. It's seen as someone basically goes crazy and either moves to the other side of the world, buys a new car, goes on holidays or has an affair or whatever, because you start to search for things that are outside of you. So you start to search for solutions externally. Whereas midlife revolution is when you wake up a little bit before and you decide that actually... I want something else. I don't want to fit into the cookie cutter. I want to define success for myself. I want to have my own definition of happiness. And that's what I want to strive towards. And I want to work towards whoever I want to become. So it's a much more positive way of looking at things. But also midlife revolution is looking within rather than looking outside for solutions. Because outside solutions are always temporary. So unless you do the internal work, you always be on the hunt for the next thing. So once you have the car... And the initial enthusiasm runs off. You think, oh, I need the house. And then you get the house and then it's something else. But actually what you're looking for is within you, not outside of you. And you're an expert on this. And I know from going through your book. So I'm going to ask you, can you tell our audience your story? Because you started out literally coming from another country, going to a country where you didn't speak the language, etc. And I'll let you take it from there. Definitely. I revolutionized my life completely twice. And the first time was when I didn't speak a word of English. I packed one bag and took a 24 hour bus journey from Poland to the UK and decided that I, I'm going to have to learn the language and figure things out. And I created a life that was way beyond my wildest dreams, um, which was amazing. And then New Year's Eve, pretty much a year ago, so the last New Year's Eve, um, the fairy tale life that I created fell apart completely, ironically, just after midnight. So to me, that was a call for another revolution. And people were telling me, oh, with what happened, it will take you two or three years to move on. You will need time to heal and recover. This will be a new chapter. And I just thought to myself, I know where the advice is coming from and I appreciate it, but I just wasn't willing to invest two or three years of my time and emotions and energy into something that has already happened. I had I had no option to turn back time. I had no option to change the situation. So the only option was to look forward and make a decision. And in that moment, I decided that I wanted to get better, not better. And I wanted this experience to bring me wisdom, not wounds. So yet again... I packed one bag, so I sold, gave away, donated everything that I had. Um, And I took my two dogs, my two Dalmatians, Nala and Mickey, and a one-way ticket um, halfway across the world and decided to create a brand new life. So instead of having a new chapter, I decided to write a brand new book on my life. And literally, when you say write a brand new book, you did, because that's your book, The Midlife Revolution. Am I correct? 100%. And I have to say, you really took the steps. We tell people, throw out the old, get rid of it. We have guests saying that. But honestly, you did that. And again, uh, we're hearing it directly from you, someone who has lived it. You're not just proposing something like a doctor in a book. 
you've gone through it and you're giving our audience the benefit of uh, what you learned and maybe some things to avoid. Absolutely. It's really important for me to be an example of the reality. So I, I always study, uh, I continuously study um, and I experiment and I practice and I do things over and over until I figure things out. Because when I work with people, I want people to know that they are incredible hands and I haven't just read a book and I'm passing on some quotes, but I have actually lived through it. I studied it. I tested it from various different angles. So I know what works and what is difficult and what, what the challenges may be. And you make a lot of great points. We're going to talk about those. But before we go further, we're going to let our audience know that you're listening to The Secrets of Success on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. I'm your host, Bill Horan. Our guest today is Nina Shevchuk. She is the author of the book, The Midlife Revolution. And Nina, I'm going to ask you where we can get the book and if there's a website where we can learn more. Absolutely. So the book is available for free uh, on my website. It's a free ebook to download. And my website is just themidliferevolution.com. So anyone is welcome to obviously come and download it. But there's also lots of other resources um, that people can use to basically help to revolutionize your whole life or parts of it. Because I'm, I'm perfectly aware that we all choose our levels of adventure. So for me, a level of adventure was to write a brand new book and literally start from scratch. Um, but for some people, that isn't what they want, but they might want to revolutionize part of their life, like career um, or, you know, how they look after their well-being and so on. So I feel like every human being is unique and we need to decide on our own path. And that's what's important. So all of the resources are there and available. And a lot of my stories being shared there from both of my revolutions um, of life as well. Now, Nina, you had a magic word in there. I want to make sure I heard it. Did I hear the word free? It is free, yeah. <laughs> oh, I didn't know that. Maybe I missed that part of it. So before the show, so th this is really a great opportunity for our listeners. We always tell them it's, we want them to be successful, but the real um, impetus to success is the listener has to take action. You have to do something. Here, you don't even have to go out to a bookstore to buy the book. Nina is offering it to you for free. The book is called The Midlife Revolution. It's by our guest, Nina Shevchuk. And her, the spelling of her last name is S-Z-E-W-C-Z-A-K. So it's an unusual spelling for most of us. But look for the book, The Midlife Revolution. Now, Nina, I think you mentioned in the book that um, we want to get better, not bitter. And I like sayings like that because a lot of time that keeps us going. It's a quick way during the day to just remind ourselves what our goals are. Um, and you say life is too short to be stuck in the past. Is that a problem you found with a lot of people? Do we kind of look back rather than ahead? We do, we do. And a lot of the times, especially when adversities happen or bad things happen in our life, we tend to go back to it and feel like, oh, why did this happen to me? Or, you know, this still hurts years on. And sometimes I speak to people and they will be bringing up situations that have happened 10, 20, 30 years ago, and they're still upset about it. And to me, you're making yourself ill by doing this because your mind, our minds, don't, they don't understand that you're just remembering something. So, for example, if I think about what happened to me on New Year's Eve last year, just bring in the memories for my mind. I am back in that situation. I am back in that scenario. It's not just a memory. So, of course, our thoughts drive our emotions. So just remembering it will make me feel sad or angry or upset. Um, and all the feelings that I felt on that night. And then those emotions are then generating the chemicals uh, within our body. So there will be chemicals of stress. Um, so every time you remember something that happened in the past, ultimately you are going back to the past. And that's emotionally and chemically as well. And a lot of the times if this is stuck within you, you haven't really moved on and you're allowing the memory of something that's already happened that, you know, you have to work through it, but you have to put it in the box with the past all over it and, and leave it where it is. It's a history now. Otherwise, the situation that has already happened will influence or even dictate your future. And is that really what we want? Like, you know, you have got in every moment, we have the opportunity to decide to create the future that we want. Um, so you don't have to drag your past baggage into the future with you. What's happened has already happened. Use it for the wisdom that it offers, not for the wounds that it can give you and get better and not bitter. So don't allow 
that influence um, of the past kind of drag it, drag drag that into the future. And I'm just going to repeat something you just said. Use it for the wisdom, not the wounds. We all tend to think of the most negative thing that happened to us, whether it was a car accident or an unfortunate event or a relative who passed away. We can't change that. That was the past. And I think just what you said, if we learn from it, if we miss that relative, we'll appreciate the people around us and uh, maybe treat them a little better and move on from there. Now, I copied down a quote from your book. The only constant in life is change. Change is inevitable, but transformation is a conscious choice. Can you talk about the difference there with transformation? What does that really mean? Well, you can, again, going back to get better, not bitter, and you use the experiences for wisdom or not wounds with every situation that happens. And change is inevitable. Change happens all the time. The world moves on. Things are changing the whole time, which is quite ironic because I often meet people and they're like, I don't like change. I don't like uncertainty. I'm like, change and uncertainty are pretty much the only constant in life. It happens all the time. Um so you can decide to either use what's happening within your life and what's happening around you to transform, or you can decide that, you know, you'll be resisting it and will be trying to stay as you are whilst everything else moves around you. And I think choosing transformation brings so much more value because you learn to become someone else. You, you learn to develop new skills. You learn to see the world in, in different um, in different perspectives. So rather than feeling like, oh, back in the day, it was better. It wasn't, but we just see it as something. We, you know, we erase some of the bad moments and we just, you know, have fond memories of things. Rather than being stuck in the past, you think, okay, well, how can I use every moment for a foundation for something better in the future? And that's where the transformation comes from, basically seeing the lessons in things and not feeling like a victim of circumstances. Because the minute you feel like a victim, you will become a victim over time if that's your predominant feeling every day. I, I love what you just said, and I hope uh, our audience can replay it. And if they want, they can go to a podcast of the show, and I'll just mention it to them. If you didn't hear the full show from Nina, you can go to nccradio.org. That's nccradio.org. And look for the show on the midlife revolution. Nina is saying some very interesting things, and the transformation part is up to you. This is a conscious choice that you make. And as she said, we always look back and talk about the good old days. So we talk about the good old days, which were 10 years ago. And 10 years ago, we probably talked about the good old days, which at that time was 20 years ago. So there's always nice memories we lean back on, whether it's school or friends or a location we lived in. But that shouldn't spoil today. And I think that's what you're bringing out in your book, and it's great. You also mentioned that self-control is the only control we really have. Do people give that up too quickly? I think so. I think we create an illusion for ourselves that we control so much more um, in life than we actually do. And often that self-control, people are either not very aware that that's the only control that you have got, or people sometimes don't know how to use it to our advantage. But if you take full 100% responsibility for yourself and for your life and for the experience that you're creating yourself and you're thinking, how do I respond to the situation? How do I make the most of it? How do I, you know, how do I squeeze the lemons and get the lemonade out of it? Then that's a much better foundation for the great days that will be in front of you rather than just thinking about the good old days that have already passed. Nina, have you surprised yourself with the strength you had in the last year? You went through a difficult uh, um, marital uh, situation uh, just about a year ago. Looking back, have you done things that you would have said you could never do before this time? Absolutely, a million percent. When everything happened, truth to be told, I didn't know how am I going to get from one second to the next. I had no idea how I'm going to get through it. And I am someone who considered, considers themselves as someone who's very resilient, very positive, very strong. People see me like this and I saw myself as that too. But with that situation, I genuinely had no idea how I'm going to get over it. Yet within a few months of all the work that I had been doing and practicing, I was able to look back at everything that happened and I was able to look back at it with no emotion, no good, not bad. It, it's just like looking back at a, you know, an old movie that I once saw. And I'm really grateful and really appreciative for everything that happened. If someone had said that to me at the start of the year, that I will be able to 
deal with it and look back at the situation without being angry or being sad or being devastated or you know still having my heart broken and so on I'm not sure I would have believed that I would be able to achieve in such a short space of time but if someone had told me that I will be looking back and will be grateful for it and that I will forgive and look at everyone involved with compassion and empathy I would have laughed off in the faces I wouldn't have believed at all um whereas right now if someone had told me you can go back to December 31st and you have your fertile life back and nothing happens or you can go through hell again hand on heart I would go through hell again because the lessons and the the growth that I've achieved through this process as horrendous as it was is immense so I'll do it again for for the lessons because I feel that that actually sets me up for a much better future and uh, hopefully not even that bad but many of us have gone through things where it might be um, you know, either an illness or, or the loss of a friend or something that is a strong life event. And yet you're saying that this has made you stronger and you're almost grateful for it. I think you said that, that it's taught you a lot about yourself. And here you are an author. Now you're part of the media. You're on radio and TV shows, giving interviews. And uh, for anybody interested, I would stress with him. I'm going to give it to you in a minute. The name of uh, Nina's book is the Midlife Revolution, and she's going to tell you how to get it shortly. But at this point in the show, I'd like to remind you that you're listening to The Secrets of Success on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHBC. I'm Bill Horan. Our guest today is Nina Shefchuk. She is the author of The Midlife Revolution, and she's going to tell us where we can get the book and a website where we can learn more. Absolutely. So the book, as we already mentioned, is free, and it is available on just themidliferevolution.com, which is my website. Um, so go there and download it. Also, you can message me, um, contact me via the website, or you can find me on social media. And I'm always happy to answer any questions, to give an advice, to share anything I, you know, I know, because I truly believe that we're here to help each other and there's no need to suffer for long periods of time if you can get through things quicker and use them for, for growth and for wisdom. So I'm always happy to share. And I was just thinking, as you're saying that, if we were physically ill in bed for a week or a month or whatever time, we would say, gee, we wish we could shorten this. We start to appreciate even going to work and walking the dog, et cetera. And Nina's telling you, she's going to explain her experiences, what you can do to shorten that period. So what a great offer. And on top of that, it's free. The book is free. You can go to our website and get it. And we'll give you that information one more time before the end of the show. Now, Nina, you said we tend to think of life with boundaries uh, in the existing reality. What does that mean? And can you give us an example of that, how many of us fall into that? I think we create, well, we create our own reality, right? So when you, when you create your life and you settle somewhere in a location and you have got your job somewhere and you have got your family, then the future that you're thinking about, you thinking about, you are thinking about your future within that reality of the similar location, unless you want to move somewhere, but most of the time it will be within the realms of your existing life. Um, whereas you can create something completely different. Um, we just don't think about it. Or we don't think it's possible for us because our day to day is obviously looking in a specific way. And our minds, our minds are records of the past. So they are, they create, they are creating our futures based on the experiences that we have had. So in order to create something new, you need to help your mind and show the mind new horizons. So just like a year ago when I was still in a 17 year long career and I had a completely different life, my mind could not see the life that I'm living right now, which is completely different to what was a year ago. So I had to show my mind what's possible. I had to explore what is it that, you know, that I want to create that I haven't created before and how, how is this going to be possible? How am I going to make it happen? So it is, we generally, if you allow your mind to be your master, it will create your future for you based on the past. So if you want to create something else, you need to help it by showing it in your horizons. Now, Nina, in your book, I think it's on page 23, you have uh, some questions for people to consider. And I think this is a great I'm going to call it a manual, but it's really only a page or two. But the questions really do get people started on this. 
And it's almost like a party game that makes you think of things in your life. Can you give us some of the questions and how this can help us in the process? Definitely. I think if you are wondering what you want to do for the rest of your life or even the next one, two, five, 20 years, I think it's important to think, who do you want to become? Not in terms of profession, um, not in terms of a job, but as a human being, like, who do you want to be throughout the experience on this planet? Like, what is important to you? Um, what kind of values and and what kind of, you know, what's the definition of happiness for you? Like, what do you want it to look like for, for the next however many years? So who do you want to become? It's a question that I always like to start with. Um, I think it's also important to think, where do you, where's your direction of travel? So where do you want to go? What, what do you want to achieve? What makes you feel fulfilled? What really matters to you? Because very often... The midlife crisis starts when you feel like you have been doing the job day in, day out, and you have achieved the kind of, you know, perceived success and you have got a family and you've got the holidays, but something is missing. So then if you want to figure out what is missing is what is your definition of happiness? What does that mean to you? Not what you think happiness is judged by everybody else's definitions, but what does that mean to you? What emotions do you want to live by? Because if you live in by emotions of being stressed or being angry or being frustrated most of the time, is this what you want the rest of your life look like? Or do you prefer to live by emotions of more joy, more happiness, more peace, more love? These are the questions that we need to consider because you need to create your direction of travel. So where are you heading for the next however many years? When you know where you're heading, then you can think, you know, who do I need to become in order to create this? Um, which I think is really important. And then consider the emotions that you want to live by. Consider your identity, like we get so hanged up on, on who we think we are because of the persona that we created, because of course, we're trying to fit in, in the culture that we live in and the family that we have got and, you know, in the workplace and so on. But a lot of the times, if you then start looking at it and, and digging deep in, in terms of what is my identity, really, um, and what have I created over the years that now I kind of just play to rather than this is it. Um, then you can look at it and think, actually, what do I want it to be? Um, and what is still true to me and what is serving me and what isn't? And, and then you can adjust and, and evolve and, you know, leave the things that need to stay in the past, in the past and, and move on towards your future. Nina, I don't think you even realize what a good book this is. I have really didn't enjoyed it. And as I said, we've been on for 33 years. So we've read a lot of the great authors that have been on the show. We've read their books, talked to them. Uh, I think this is a hidden gem for people and even better that it's free to them. Uh, once again, I'm going to ask you to give that information. How do they go about getting the book? What's the website? Go to the midliferevolution.com and just click on the free download of the Midlife Revolution ebook and it's yours. And this is a great way to start that revolution in your life. There's a lot of great tips. And even if you just take out 10% of what's in the book, I think you're going to see some major changes in life. Nina, thank you so much for being with us today. We really appreciate it. And thank you so much for having me. I've really loved our conversation. To our audience, you've been listening to The Secrets of Success on the voice of Nassau Community College 90.3 WHPC. I'm your host, Bill Horan, asking you to please join us again next week at the same time when we will continue our journey to success.